Wouldn't it be nice if every discovery that was ever made by archaeologists came with a handwritten note explaining what it was and why it was made? Well, we're sure a few archaeologists would prefer things to be that way, but we wouldn't. It would mean there would be no archaeological mysteries left, and we love a good archaeological mystery. In fact, we've packed this video full of them for your entertainment. Although archaeologists abuse the phrase, find of a lifetime, it's still worth paying attention when one of them uses it. Let's look at the credentials of this prehistoric Golden Sun Bowl, which was discovered in late September 2021 and described in such terms. The bowl is roughly 3,000 years old and was discovered near Ebreichsdorf, Austria. It is heavily deformed and fractured but still has elaborate ornamental inscriptions. It's thought to come from an old Urnfield culture settlement. The object was discovered buried close to a prehistoric dwelling's wall, and is notable for its sun motif pattern, which is assumed to depict the sun's rays. It's also exceedingly fragile, as it's composed of extremely thin sheet metal that has been determined to be 90% gold. Only about 30 gold poles of this type have ever been discovered in Europe, and this is the first to be discovered in Austria. Scientists discovered remnants of organic material inside the bowl, which they believe to be a gold thread sewn fabric, probably a ceremonial scarf worn during sun worshipping rites. The unusual object is currently on its way to a museum in Vienna. Archaeologists are sometimes referred to as tomb raiders, which is a derogatory term. They don't spend all of their time opening tombs, but it is a necessary component of their work. In September 2021, a Hispano-Visigothic burial in Ojo Guarana, Spain was opened. Surprisingly, the tomb was discovered wedged right into the rock at the San Bernabé Hermitage's entrance. They discovered the skeletal remains of an adult male within the burial, his skull still in place and staring skyward between two limestone slabs. It has piqued the interest of archaeologists since it appears to be a Christian burial. That contradicts historians' assumptions about the history of Christian worship in this region of Spain. The burial dates from the late 7th century, whereas Christianity is assumed to have arrived several centuries later. The person buried here was most likely one of the first to seek hermitage here, and he or she, probably he, would have lived in seclusion from the rest of the facility's inmates. Another question archaeologists are still trying to answer is why his tomb was carved straight into the rock, rather than being buried in a conventional manner. Humans in the past were migratory. They may have stayed in one place for a few months at a time to take advantage of good hunting weather, but for the most part, they traveled the land in pursuit of supplies. As a result, Mesolithic-era towns are uncommon, but they can be located if you know where to dig. A team from the Russian Academy of Sciences Institute of Archaeology recently discovered a large number of them near Russia's Valetma River, the towns are thought to be around 10,000 years old, according to experts. The Butovo culture, which is known to have colonized land around the upper Volga, is most likely responsible for the prehistoric villages. They were largely hunter-gatherers, but what has been discovered here could be the first indications that they were in the middle of forsaking that lifestyle in favor of something more permanent. The presence of flint hunting and fishing equipment as well as enormous mounds of fish and animal bones near a hearth, suggests that this was an agricultural site, probably a large one with multiple groups sharing the same resources. The more time archaeologists spend looking at the Anchor Church Caves in Derbyshire, England, the more they suspect that there's something more to them than just being human-made caves. They've long suspected that the caves might have been somebody's home during the Anglo-Saxon era of the 9th century. More recently, they've begun to suspect that the person in question was King Erdwulf living out his exile. It was once thought that the sandstone rock caves were hand-carved during the 18th century as a folly, but modern archaeologists believe that when the Burdett family worked on the caves during that century, 
they merely enlarged its pre-existing artificial structures. The narrow doorways and windows are more akin to the architecture of the 9th century than the 18th, and a rock-cut pillar deep inside the caves is almost identical to an Anglo-Saxon rock-cut pillar in a crypt in Repton, just a few miles from here. The new date might mean that this is the hermitage that St. Hardulf is known to have lived in during his time in the region in the 9th century. Historians are increasingly convinced that the saint and King Erdwulf were one and the same person. Here's another interesting find from June 2021. In Poland, archaeologists have been called to a site in the town of Jaroslaw, where road workers have been maintaining both the road surface and some underground sewers. When they dug the present-day road up, they were surprised to find a much older road hidden beneath a section of it. They were even more surprised when they realized that the 100-foot-long road was made of wood. The archaeologists who arrived at the scene now believe that this is an 18th-century passageway that once led to the city gate. Further excavation work was ordered, revealing the presence of other segments of the road elsewhere in the same region. Back when it was still in one piece, it would have been one of the longest wooden roads in Poland. That makes it all the stranger that it was so narrow. With a width of a little more than 10 feet, there wouldn't have been room for two carriages to pass each other. Perhaps it was a one-way street for carriages as they passed through the town before heading back out again. Oddly, there's no sign of hoof prints or carriage grooves in the wood. Either the road wasn't used often, or the wood was replaced shortly before the road was abandoned. Over the millennia, humans have observed a wide range of burial rituals, and archaeologists like to think they've seen and understood the majority of them. Occasionally, however, they come across one that defies understanding. A youngster was buried in Poland's Tunnel Welki Cave with the skull of a chaffinch inserted within its mouth sometime between the 17th and 18th centuries. There's no way the skull ended up there by accident. Thus, it had to be done on purpose, and it's likely ritualistic. That ritual's nature is unknown. The burial was first assumed to be much older, possibly as old as 4,000 years, based on previous shallow grave burials within the cave. But radiocarbon dating of the bones proved the year of the death to be between 1750 and 1850. Next to the child's head was a second chaffinch skull. Given the complete lack of comparable graves and the lack of any other information, it's probable that the nature of the burial meant something personal to either the child or his family. If that's the case, we'll probably never find out what happened here. While we identify the word pyramid with ancient Egypt, our forefathers constructed pyramid-like structures all across the world. In Teotihuacan, Mexico, for example, there is a famous pyramid. In Poland, there's another lesser-known pyramid site called Kujawi, which is where we'll be focusing our attention next. The so-called Polish pyramids are a group of 400-foot-long pyramid-shaped tombs that date back to around 6,000 years ago. The tombs were considered to be isolated until March 2021, but a recent drone-assisted survey of the surrounding terrain combined with geochemical analysis, indicated the presence of minor settlements close to the bigger sites. The settlements are small, with space for only about 10 families each settlement. They were most likely used as temporary lodging for the laborers who were charged with constructing the tombs. Following up on the first surveys, excavations found the bones of sheep, pigs, cows, and goats. This suggests that rather than living off the land, the inhabitants subsisted on eating livestock. Surprisingly, despite the presence of buildings, there are no burial sites other than the monuments. Either everyone was buried in the pyramids, which seems doubtful, or the builders were buried far from their works. If you have a pet in your home today, it's probably a dog, a cat, or something smaller, like a hamster or a rabbit. 2,000 years ago, tastes were a little more exotic when it came to pets. Monkeys were especially popular and were buried with great ceremony when they passed away, as we can see at this pet cemetery in Berenice, Libya. 
This was once an important outpost of the Roman Empire. The monkey skeletons found in these shallow graves belong to rhesus monkeys. Even back then, though, there were people keeping cats and dogs. Their remains are also buried at the site, as is one falcon. One of the archaeologists responsible for the discovery was amazed by the tenderness with which the pets had been laid to rest, comparing them to sleeping babies. This is the first time that monkey skeletons have ever been found in a deliberate burial ground in Africa. It's likely that the monkeys were imported from India. They'd have been expensive to acquire and so might have been status symbols for the people who owned them. Like much of Europe, France was once part of the Roman Empire. Back then it was known as Gaul, and traces of its Roman occupation can still be found all over the country. In February 2021, archaeologists began excavating the remains of two ancient Roman houses in the city of Nîmes, houses that appear to have belonged to extremely high-ranking Roman officers. The Romans knew Nîmes as Colonia Nemausus and occupied it around 2050 years ago, eventually turning it into an administrative center from which they governed the south of the country. There were around 60,000 people living here, enjoying facilities like gymnasiums, temples, amphitheaters, and a building that may even have been a circus. The two newly discovered domus contain entrance halls, central halls, atriums, bedrooms, large dining rooms, studies, and kitchens. One of them has a stunning marble floor with checkerboard decorations and underfloor heating. This would have been the peak of high society living 2,000 years ago. In fact, there are plenty of people living in Nîmes today who don't enjoy this standard of luxury. The owners of the homes haven't been identified yet, but the archaeologists hope that identification may eventually be possible. The eagle is a symbol of the United States of America, but eagle symbology was apparently important in South America long before Europeans colonized the north of the continent. We know this because archaeologists discovered a huge eagle sculpture in the ruins of an Aztec temple in Mexico City in late January 2021. They believe it to be approximately 600 years old. Back when it was carved, this location would have been in the middle of Tenochtitlan, the mighty capital of the Aztec Empire. If archaeologists are right about the carving's age, it was created during the reign of Moctezuma I during the mid-15th century. The discovery came as part of a wider excavation of Templo Mayor, which might yet have bigger secrets to give up. This wasn't just any old temple. It was a pyramid referred to by the people of the time as the Great Temple, and was considered the most important building in the whole city. Eagles were associated with the birth of the sun in Aztec mythology and were seen as representations of the god Huitzilpotli. A chapel dedicated to the same god exists at the summit of the temple. It never ceases to amaze us how archaeologists are able to identify tiny scraps of the past in ground full of mud and debris. In January 2021, Archaeologists in England found small but precious scraps of mineralized Anglo-Saxon textiles. It probably helped with the discovery that they also found more than 3,000 grave goods in the same location in Overstone, Northamptonshire, which was being given a thorough examination ahead of planned construction work. It's rare to find Anglo-Saxon fabric because, after 1,500 years, it would normally be expected to have rotted away, but it's present on a variety of items that were once attached to clothing, including a metal brooch. The full archaeological dig eventually identified an Anglo-Saxon era graveyard containing the remains of 154 people and the foundations of 22 different structures. They've also detected signs of what they believe to be a 4,000 years old Bronze Age settlement which the Anglo-Saxons built right on top of. Further digs and excavations will be required in order to find out more about the possible Bronze Age discovery, so the planned housing development has been delayed. There wasn't much to choose from in terms of grave goods during the Stone Age. It seems that if you wanted to show your respect to the dead, 
you accessorized their graves with as many elk teeth as possible. That's the impression we get from the curious burial grounds of Yushni Olyeni Ostrov, an island in Russia's Republic of Karelia. The occupants of these graves were laid to rest a whole 8,200 years ago. The graves are covered in red ochre, which is believed to have been either a mark of respect or an intention to comfort the deceased in the afterlife. Aside from the red ochre, almost everything is covered in elk teeth. The dead are dressed with pendants made of elk incisors, dresses with linings of elk teeth, elk tooth belts, and even elk tooth headdresses. The materials parts of the clothing have long since rotted away, but the elk teeth have survived and allow us to picture what the clothing may have looked like. Similar burial traditions from the same era have been identified across much of Scandinavia. Elk were probably hard to find among the ancient Eurasian forests, and so the more of these rare teeth the dead were buried with, the more respect was shown by the gesture. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!